What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Welcome back. How you guys doing? How are you guys doing? We're back with the F1 video. We have How Good Was Sebastian Vettel in his prime? Man, from most hated to the most loved. So maybe this, this video does tell us why people were hating on him. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. Tomorrow's the race, Mexico City, Mexico City. Um, thank you guys again for the love and support you guys do show with. The, uh, f1 videos man can't thank you guys enough keep liking keep subbing keep engaging like i said i see you guys comments i do engage with majority of you guys but keep keep supporting man it's gonna take time though like i said it's gonna still gonna take time for me to fully pronounce the names you know fully understand what's going on but anyway hope you guys are doing great hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing um but yeah without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video how good was sebastian in his prime let's get started also shout out to him and with the video Getting where sebastian vettel ranks amongst the greatest drivers vettel. in formula one is a really interesting Wait, debate how did he say one name? that has been talked about deciding where sebastian vettel ranks amongst vettel. the greatest he says drivers vettel. I thought it was vettel. in formula one is a really interesting debate and one that has been talked about for years and yes whilst his recent years at ferrari might not be his best he is a driver that in my opinion in his prime was the very definition of unstoppable a driver who burst onto the scene they and made drivers and fans around the world both love and hate him as he broke records and put himself in the conversation with the greats in formula one <laughs> They hey was just saying because he was winning. They was saying because he was winning. I'm going to be talking about Sebastian Vettel and looking back Sebastian and talking Vettel. about just how good he was in his prime. Now, for the people that have just started watching Formula One, maybe in the past few years, they might see Sebastian Vettel and see that he's a four-time world champion, but not quite realize just how good of a driver he really was, especially in his prime. And that is what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Now, guys, don't forget, if you do want to support the channel, don't forget to drop a like, smash that subscribe button, and check out my social medias. Instagram and Twitter will be above. But guys, let's get into this one. Now, deciding where Sebastian Vettel's prime started, and more importantly, even if he's still in it, is even to this day still up for debate, especially after his 2019 season. However, let's go back all the way to 2006 and the beginning of his F1 story. Sebastian Vettel's name Look first came up in, Formula was. One in 2006 when he was given the seat on a Friday practice at the Turkish Grand Prix for the BMW Sauber F1 team. Needless to say, it was a very interesting debut. On one hand, he actually set the quickest time in free practice two on his first time Turkish out, but Grand on the Prix. other, he also set a record for the quickest penalty given to a driver on their debut as he was caught <laughs> speeding in the pit lane just six seconds into his Formula One <laughs> debut. Ironically, this would almost summarize the career he would go on to have an undeniable amount of speed and talent mixed with a long river of incidents and also some poor judgment as well before he got to red bull he made his official race debut at the 2007 united states grand prix where he stood in for robert kubica after his massive crash at the previous race in canada yet again the young german impressed and on his debut grand prix finished in eighth scoring the team a point in his maiden race this impressed red bull enough to later in the season give him the final eight races in their sister team toro rosso before he would be later confirmed as a toro rosso driver for 2008 That's where he would make his proper full Formula One season debut. If so his 06 when he started out. Obvious, 2008 he's been racing for that's what, like 15 years. He's been racing for about 15 years now. It's pretty impressive. Longevity, four time champ starting back in 06. It wasn't a great start, like you said. He set the record for the fastest qualifying lap at the Turkish Grand Prix. Then he followed that up with getting a penalty. Now, I don't know. But I think I, I I have heard of like the speeding and the pits and like the pit lane. So I'm assuming you have to go a certain speed entering the pit the pit lanes. And I I mean I I'm assuming the minute you leave out the pit, you know you can just take off. But safety have it. So I'm guessing he was just speeding, either entering or leaving. It's just you shouldn't really do that. Safety hazard, I guess. Would but. turn out to be his big breakout year and a year where he would really kind of stake out his claim as the next rising star in Formula One. The start of the season didn't start off well, however, because Toro Rosso for the first five races was actually using their 2007 car from the previous season, which was very uncompetitive. However, after oh, they did their new car at the Monaco Grand Prix. Oh, so I'm, I'm assuming every year, that, you know, they got to get it. So I'm assuming every year they make a new car, which 
I I would assume they do. You know, what I mean, you can't just run you can't run a twenty eighteen car. You know, in twenty twenty one. So it makes sense. Makes sense. I actually, I, I surprisingly how they didn't have a car updated for the upcoming season, and he had to run a car the year before. But I don't know if that's on him or just the team in general to not be prepared, but immediately set to work scoring his first point of the season and going on to be one of the best drivers in the midfield in the remaining 13 races he would only fail to score points on four occasions and then to cap off an already brilliant debut season he shocked the world of formula one at the italian grand prix by taking both pole position during a wet qualifying and then winning the 2008 italian grand prix at monza for toro rosso breaking multiple formula one world records in the process oh and by the way something really kind of funny about that that whole situation is that it actually meant that Sebastian Vettel at the time gave the sister team their first win before the main Red Bull team. I actually think that is actually really hilarious and kind of borderline embarrassing for Red Bull but yeah. nevertheless a driver of Vettel's caliber wasn't going to be stuck in the midfield for much longer as Red Bull announced that it would be their young German star who would partner Mark Webber for the 2009 season. Now, 2009 was the year where Vettel really established himself as a real frontrunner in Formula 1. Red Bull came out with a competitive car capable of winning races, but of course famously didn't start the season with the double diffuser that gave Braun the early advantage and eventually the championship with Jensen Button. However, that year wasn't a complete write-off for Vettel as he beat his more experienced teammate at the first time of asking and delivered Red Bull their first pole position and race win in China and even towards the uh, latter part of the season produced a title fight back to finish in second place. Although this won't be a memorable year in Vettel's career, it was 2009 that saw him mature and grow in the spotlight. He made mistakes and had incidents, and in the end, it was Jensen's experience and consistency that allowed him to hang on to that title. But now Vettel was ready and knew what it would take to fight for a championship. And did he get right? The turn of the decade oh, saw right. the beginning of Vettel's real prime. Everything came together for Seb as he would go on to dominate the next four years, winning four consecutive drivers' titles and helping Red Bull win four consecutive constructors title he should went for that fifth <laughs> he should went for that fifth i hope you get that fifth but four consecutive championships god wait that's 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 impressive that's very very impressive as well by the time he was done winning championships at the end of 2013 the stats were truly ridiculous for Vettel between 2010 and 2013 Vettel won 44 percent of all races with 24 wins and took 52 percent of all pole positions as well with 40 poles he became a four-time world champion at the age of 27 and by the end was in the conversation for being one of the greatest of all time but forgetting the stats for a second, why was Vettel almost unstoppable in his prime? That's well, good. Firstly, let's just get the obvious thing out of the way that no one can ever stop talking about. And yes, like every single dominant driver that has come before or since, he had the best car on the grid for the majority of those championships. The entire Red Bull team was a great outfit. And with the genius of Adrian Newey at the helm of designing the car, the entire Red Bull Aero team actually as well absolutely nailed the aero regulations for that generation with some fantastic innovations like the blown diffuser and also at the transition from Bridgestone tires to Pirelli's in 2011. All of this gave Seb the car he needed to unleash his true potential and to me Red Bull easily had the best car in 2010, 2011 and 2013. In 2012 on the other hand I've always thought that McLaren had actually the best car from start to finish but the point is that Red Bull consistently gave Vettel a good enough car year on year to at least challenge for the title. So now, Red Bull was just, they, the it was coming correct. His speed, his raw speed <laughs> Red Bull was, was coming incredible. correct. Evident by the amount of pole positions he took during that time. And on a Saturday, there was nobody, nobody on the F1 grid that could touch him with many people just being happy on some races to see someone other than Vettel be on pole position. Finally, something other than a Red Bull on pole position. <laughs> But it was how he adapted in the races and also his ability to adapt to the Pirelli tyres in 2011 that also gave him a massive advantage, something his teammate Mark Webber did not grasp as quickly. Vettel at certain points became so ridiculously and almost arrogantly quick, he would actually try to set as many fastest laps as possible <laughs> during a race just for the fun of it, with his team always trying to control him and trying to slow him down to stop him from driving too fast. No, no, forget that. 
No, I'm sorry. Forget that. No, I ain't. No. <laughs> no, I'm trying to break every record. I'm trying to break every record. Forget that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to break every record. <laughs> Just seen uh, Raikkonen pitted on the last lap. He's now on brand new tyres, and he's going to obliterate your lap. Unbelievable, guy. He was also really good at making comebacks. Although we see the four world titles and think that he led from start to finish, probably coasting most of the time in his Red Bull, let's not forget that in both 2010 and 2012 as well, he had to make big title comebacks towards the end of the seasons, having been 31 points down in 2010 God and 44 please. points down in 2012 against multiple title contenders. Now, the next skill in Vettel's armory was his utter ruthlessness and unmatched self-belief. He never believed that he was in the wrong, which uh, kind of sounds a little bit familiar to me, and was never scared to go wheel-to-wheel -wheel with any driver or even go beyond the limit with both his teammate Mark Webber or even his own team. His relationship with his teammate and the other drivers was never amazing. Sure, there was respect, but you'd never catch Weber or Alonso giving Vettel too much credit for what he achieved against them back in those days. His rivalry with Fernando is actually one that is not talked about as much as it should, in my opinion, but his rivalry with his teammate Mark Webber, on the other hand, yeah, that is well documented. Uh-oh. There were many incidents between the two of them whilst they were both in Formula 1, dating back even to when Vettel was in Toro Rosso when he crashed into the back of Webber under the safety car in Japan of 2000. 2007. When they became teammates, the rivalry did not take long to stop. Dang. Multiple incidents both in the public and within the team between the two of them. From the front wing incident in Silverstone in 2010 to their crash together whilst fighting for the lead in Turkey that same year. And then eventually escalating to the incident that most likely made Mark Webber not only leave Red Bull, but Formula 1 for good. The 2013 Malaysia Multi-21 incident. Uh-oh. I already know shit's about to go down. Now, I'm sure lots of people are aware of the multi-21 incident between the two of them, but for those of you that weren't, during the Malaysian Grand Prix, with Weber leading and the team in a comfortable 1-2 position, Vettel was told over team radio by his uh, race engineer to basically turn everything down and just follow Weber to the chequered flag and secure the team a comfortable 1-2. However, right. Vettel had other ideas. Defying team orders, he fought hard against Mark Weber in a brilliant wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle and overtook him to win the race. To the dismay of his teammate, his team, and and everyone watching as well. Now, this is where it gets interesting because after the race, Sebastian Vettel stuck to the usual PR script and said that he regret everything that he did. However, a few weeks later in China, we got to see the real mentality of a world champion. Had I understood the message, I would have thought about it and probably had done the same thing because Mark doesn't deserve that. Bottom line is that- Golly, you're rude with him, uh, Sebastian. Now, I, I now I can see why people didn't. If I was about to F one back then, I I would hate Sebastian too for what he did. You guys are already one and two, so your team already has the, the top two you know spots in the race. Let's let the man win. But at the same time, you know what I mean, Sebastian. He said he has that self belief. He wants to win, win, win. And I guess his ego and pride just took over and. <laughs> He, he wanted to win the race. I mean, even though his team and everybody was telling him just just stay behind them, you know, let's just be let's just get a comfortable one too. He ain't going for it. <laughs> he ain't going for it. I was. Racing, I can see I why people didn't like him. Now, this move basically made Vettel public enemy number one in the eyes of the drivers, the fans, and everyone was absolutely slating him for his attitude, and also hating the fact that he was winning like never before. Right. He even got booed on the podium of races multiple times that year. You up here on the podium with you. Please don't do that. That's not correct. <laughs> They're on a tour. You know, they go around with a bus. <laughs> However, despite all of this, despite all of the hate that he had to endure and go through, he responded like a champion, winning his fourth world title in India in 2013. He also Shut set up. and matched some ridiculous Formula 1 world records on the way, such as becoming the youngest world champion, the youngest double, triple, and quadruple world champion. He also matched Michael Schumacher for the most wins in Michael a single Schumacher. season. He oh, you guys have been saying Schumacher for the most to check him out, Michael Schumacher. A single season with nine, which is, by the way, ridiculous, and then also became the youngest 
youngest race winner in 2008 as well amongst loads of other records that honestly I, it would be the video would be too long if i went through all of them but basically just know that in his mid-20s he began to rewrite the history books of formula one dude was going crazy now, as had become the normal thing to do at the time everyone even people like alonso tried to belittle and diminish his achievements by saying that it was just the adrian newey red bull combination that had won vettel the four world titles oh, as man. an example listen carefully to what martin brundle said moments after vettel had become a four-time world champion the three men really who have set their stall out and gone on to, to conquer the world in terms of formula one Horner, newey vettel most valuable man in formula one standing there and he doesn't have long hair <laughs> Now, I know that it's not kind of that big, and I'm not trying to single out Martin Brundle, by the way, but it just always seemed that whenever either fans or pundits talked about Sebastian Vettel back in those days, he never got the credit he deserved for being an absolutely unstoppable force. Yes, Vettel was not a nice guy on track. He was ruthless, nasty, bitter, and never gave up, even going against orders from his own team to benefit himself. He wanted but to win. End of the you can't day, hate on that, though. He wanted to win. The only thing his ever saw was the back of his car and that famous finger showing people exactly who was the number one dog in Formula One. And to be honest, guys, as for his character, from my point of view, nice guys in Formula One don't become world champions. And Sebastian Vettel, regardless of what you think of him, well, <laughs> he became a four-time world champion. So I suppose for me, there's just one last thing to talk about. Is Sebastian Vettel still in his prime? Well, to be honest, guys, for me, no. Don't get me wrong, he silenced all the haters and all the Red Bull critics when he went to Ferrari and showed exactly why he was a four-time world champion, but I think he reached the end of his prime somewhere between 2018 and 2019 when he couldn't quite put everything together to beat Hamilton for the title and made quite a few mistakes under pressure, mm. and then, of course, being beaten by his young teammate Charles Leclerc. But at the same time, to me, that's kind Charlie. of meaningless because perhaps he's just one of those Charles drivers that maybe peaked a little bit too early in his career, which almost sounds a little bit ridiculous. I mean, the guy is a four-time world champion. Right. But the bottom line is, is that regardless of what's happened since his championship winning years, Sebastian Vettel will forever be a Formula One legend who in his prime was absolutely Going unbeatable. Crazy. Well, guys, there you go. That is my video on Sebastian Vettel. We're looking into how good he was in his prime. Now, Seb is one of my most favorite drivers on the grid. I absolutely love the guy. I grew up watching Sebastian Vettel, and he's such a kind of funny and cool character, both in and out of the car as well. He's great with the media and great with the fans, and yeah. So I can already tell, dude was absolutely stud. Sebastian Vettel was, man. He just wanted to win. I mean, I, I, cause I don't agree with him, you know, him and Mark Webber, their issues, they're going on. I thought his teammates got to make it work, but we have seen times instances in which teammates, you know, it doesn't always work out, you know? <laughs> it doesn't always work out. But very, very interesting on the man Sebastian. Now I see why he was hated, but you see how, how loved he is now, though. But anyway, you guys don't get like a sub. Comment down below, you guys' thoughts and reactions. I'll see you guys later.